You know how everyone is always so afraid of eating GMOs or genetically modified organisms? Well, what if I told you that just about everything we eat is genetically modified? I mean, for real. Kind of like how different dogs are bred to have different traits, so are a lot of things in our daily life. You can try and eat organically as possible, but you can't fully escape man and our creation. What is up, you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and welcome back to another video. And I hope you're sitting down because I might just blow your whole world wide open with today's video. Let's get into it. These are the top 10 things you think are natural but are definitely not. Starting us off at number 10, we have chickens. Yes, chickens, chicken breasts, chicken wings, chicken fingers, buffalo chicken chip dip. All of it is genetically modified. Now, I don't mean that every individual piece of chicken has been scientifically messed with, but the chickens a lot of us eat today are not the same ones that used to exist. Chickens as a whole have been selectively bred to have thinner bones and more meat than their OG ancestors. People have use natural selection to their benefit when it comes to the food industry. Say in a generation of 20 chickens, five of them have thin bones and are quite plump. Workers will then breed those chickens together so the next generation after them all have thin bones and fat and then they'll just keep doing that until every chicken is as thin boned and fat meated as we can get them. It's exploitation, it's completely against their benefit and solely for ours. Coming in at number 9 is corn. I freaking love corn! <laughs> when I was young I would literally just have bull of it. It tastes so good and it's just so underrated. Then you may have heard of rainbow corn or glass gem corn. You know those super colorful prissy ones? Now a lot of people think that that's what our corn is descended from and to be honest, I don't even know if it is. But what I do know is that 10,000 years ago the yellow corn on the cob that we love to roast on the barbecue in the summer didn't look anything like it does now. In fact, it actually used to look more like wheat. But then some genius spent thousands of years crossbreeding corn to give us that sweet peaches and cream taste that summer wouldn't be completely without. I mean, of course it couldn't be natural. There's a reason why anytime you eat corn, it just passes through your digestive tract unscathed and gets shit out of your ass. Like you never even chew the damn thing to begin with. Like, I know you guys have looked and I know you see the corn. Now at number eight are radishes. I'm not a huge fan of radishes personally. They look super pretty, but they taste like nothing. Raw, they literally have no taste. But the radishes we find today at the grocery store have also been genetically modified. Radishes actually used to be fully black, which if you ask me is kind of cool. Which other vegetable is fully black? Olives. Oh yeah, olives, yes. <laughs> now apparently you can still find black radishes today, but more than likely you're just gonna find the red and white ones. But if you can find a black radish, send it to me on Instagram, I wanna see that shit. Me too! <laughs> and Joss! <laughs> Filling at number seven slot, we have bananas. You guys know I'm a banana Feed. I have a banana every single morning and banana milk slaps no cap. It's so underrated. But have you ever wondered why bananas don't have seeds? It's because each and every banana is actually a clone. I don't really understand how it works either, but apparently the bananas we know today are so far removed from their ancestors that they don't even contain any seeds. Please don't ask me how to grow a banana tree because I wouldn't even know what to tell you. But yeah, the bananas that used to exist used to have massive seeds that made them pretty close to inedible. Can you imagine making banana bread out of that? That, your quarantine would have been ruined. Coming in at number six are watermelons. Watermelon. <laughs> I feel like everyone enjoyed watermelons this summer. They're like the perfect summer fruit. Actually, my personal favorite summer fruit are mangoes, though. Oh my gosh. Now, honestly, old watermelons kind of remind me of old bananas. They were pale, not too much edible flesh, and lots of seeds. We only have paintings that depict these, though, which is kind of surprising to me. Like, how long ago did we start genetically modifying things? Before photography? That's crazy. Filling at number five slot is broccoli. The little tweez. I used to hate them when I was young, but wow, they really hit different now. I love them in everything. You either love them or you hate them, but no matter what your feelings are, they didn't just come to be naturally. Broccoli didn't just fall out of the sky for us. Broccoli is apparently actually the product of crossbreeding a few different types of wild cabbage, which is kind of cool. I never thought of broccoli and cabbage being related. I always thought of them as, you know, mini trees. <laughs> and don't look at me like that, because I know you did too. Now at number four are peanuts. Not my personal favorite nut variety. I like cashews or pistachios myself. Now peanuts are literally everywhere and in everything. And I feel really bad for everybody who has a peanut allergy because I can't even imagine how many foods you have to avoid. But yeah, today's peanuts are actually a crossbreed between a couple different older species of nuts. Arachis ipaensis and Arachis duranensis. It's funny because when you look at pictures of these plants, you would never think that they were types of peanuts. They look more like buttercups to me, but 
what do I know? I just had, you know, a lot of experience on Farmville, but whatever. <laughs> Coming in at number three are tomatoes, the ones that everyone thinks are a vegetable, but are in fact fruit, and that makes ketchup a fruit smoothie. Yes, you heard that right. The tomatoes used to be tiny little green and yellow things that Aztec tribes used to use in their cooking. Through breeding, they grew in size and became the big round red fruits we eat today. I mean, you can still find little green and yellow tomatoes, but the more common ones are definitely the big red ones. I actually hate the taste of actual tomatoes. I've never tasted armpit, but I feel like I bit into a tomato and I reckon it's the same thing. Agree with me on this, guys, yeah. Now, and number two are oranges. There are a lot of different varieties of orange-like fruits today, like mandarins, tangerines, clementines, but apparently all of them are some sort of combination of the pomelo and the mandarin. I don't even know if I can think of any other crossbred food that we think is its own thing that has its origins in two things that are also still so common today. I mean, you can find pomelos and mandarins literally anywhere. And as a bit of trivia, apparently in order to be considered an orange, it has to be the ancestor of a pomelo and a mandarin. A tangerine is not a type of orange because it evolved from the mandarin and not the pomelo. Dude, they all literally look so identical, I can't even tell the difference between them. So the more you know though, has anyone ever tried red orange juice by the way? Cause that sh slaps. I love it. And finally, animal one is grapefruit. This one is kind of an extension of the last point. Now, grapefruits were somehow accidentally created in 1693 when Captain Shaddock planted pomelo seeds too close to an orange tree. Over time, these two fruits cross-pollinated and gave birth to the grapefruit. It wasn't actually discovered though until the mid-1700s by Reverend Griffith Hughes. Once the Reverend realized what happened, he named it the forbidden fruit. And as a Reverend, he must have been pretty damn afraid of eating it if he decided to name it the forbidden fruit fruit. It was renamed in 1814 to the grapefruit because they look like little grapes when they're still that tiny. <laughs> And that is it for today's video, guys. Now I'm gonna be doing some common shout outs for my latest video, top 10 people who stumbled across valuable artifacts. This one is from Jason Lee, who says, Eamon, I love your Southern accent. <laughs> well, thank you, Jason, I appreciate you. <laughs> the next one is from Timothy A. Schiller, who says, wait, were you always that tall, or are you wearing high heels? Okay, well, I think from that video, I was just standing on this new block that we have. Today, I'm standing on the block, and I'm wearing heels. I was not always that tall, I'm five foot four. I just have a little booster seat. This one is from Kevin Owens who says, great video, PS, have you lost weight? Either way, looking good as always. Now I know I'm sure Kevin meant this in a complimentary way, but so many people have commented asking me if I've lost weight. No, I haven't. If anything, I've gained. But it goes to show how many people comment on my weight and I never ask for any of your opinions. So yes, thank you for noticing. I haven't lost weight, but yeah. I hope you realized when I started getting all those body shaming fat comments, I literally actively tried to lose weight just so you guys would stop commenting that I'm fat. I read every single one of your comments. Everyone does on YouTube. Don't be a hater. The next one is from Kena Lopez who says, this is to Eamon and all I want to say is that she is the one who really makes the mood better for the video. Also, I hope you read this on your next video. Well, I'm reading it right now. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Some videos are kind of hard to do, but I'm glad I can make it entertaining for you guys and that you like it. <laughs> And that is it for the comments, you guys. Thank you for all the comments. I'm trying to read as many of them as I possibly can. As always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Things. Oh. <laughs> chickens as a whole. Chickens as a whole. Chickens as a. Uh, that? As a whole. I mean, of course it can be natural. There's a reason why anytime you eat corn, it just passes through your di digestive. <laughs> what is that? I don't know, Joss. But maybe it just isn't digestible. Maybe. I love how you spelled of course OFC. <laughs> I feel like little ants will be like, oh look at these mini twees. <laughs> Arach Arachis Ipaensis. 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 You're actually super